Okay, so a couple a couple of tips for uh, coaches here. Um, something that uh, something that I used to use in tennis, and something that I that I would use still if I was teaching a lot of private lessons in my area, is. Um, for example, like let's say I had, you know, 40 privates in one week, right? 40 freaking privates is a lot of privates. That's that's like essentially 40 presentations, right? For 40 sure. different that's, presentations, yeah, a lot. right? That's so a lot. if you try to reinvent the wheel on all 40 presentations, towards the end of the week, the level of teaching will not get good, okay? if that makes sense. So something that I used to do is I would have one theme for the week. Now, granted... If Sally comes in and Sally wants to work on her offense, I'm not going to have Sally, like, use the theme that I've, that I've been using all week. <laughs> so, for example, let's say, let's say I've got 10 privates on Monday, you know, 6 on Tuesday, and 10 on Wednesday, right? I got uh, three days of just packed lessons. I'm going to stick to one theme. And, and with that being said, I'm going to tie my lessons around defensive tactics or defensive fundamentals where it's going to be a lot of transition work. It's going to be a lot of stuff where uh, just my student uh, has to learn how to scramble or has to learn how to, how to, how to neutralize. Um, but I think if you can stick with one theme, uh, for me, my level of teaching and my drills and how creative I was got a hell of a lot better towards the end of the week. No, for got, sure. a, got a for lot sure. better. And the drills and the teaching that I did on Monday, not, uh, not only did I, do, did I do them on Monday, but I did them on Friday, and they were twice as good on Friday. <laughs> Why? Because I'm, I'm like in the mode of teaching the same stuff. Um, and, and, and with that, I guess just having the mindset of like, you know, being under the umbrella of talking about defensive tactics, I got a lot more creative throughout the week. And I was able to use different keywords that register differently to people. Um, so I, I, I like that idea. And then my other little uh, fun tip was um, something that we just did like at the Kansas City camp and something that I didn't used to like doing, but I think uh, I think it holds value. Um, Daniel Roditi has been, you know, has been doing a bunch of stuff at Nellie Gale. Nellie Gale is a club in uh, San Clemente. Um, but it's just these old kind of fun king of the court style like tennis drills yep. where you'd have a, you have a challenger side, you have a king side, it's super energetic, you have a, you have a coach feeding you can even do it where you have six people on two courts. The coach stands in the middle on two courts, and the coach feeds to both courts. That way you can manage uh, – this is probably not IPTPA and PPR guidelines, <laughs> but, hey, you can manage uh, 12 people at one time in a very high-energy yep. setting. Yep. Um, but I was uh, – like, for example, let's say that the topic is uh, speed-ups. Or, or no, sorry, let's say the topic is third-ball drops, right? So let's say that the challenger side is back at the baseline. There's four people back there, two people up, and then two people back behind them. And the other side is the king side. It takes two points in a row to get over on the king side. Super simple. Um, one of the toughest part about camps is, is like a cooperative feed. And something that we talked about previously is that you should always feed out the bounce. But in this particular exercise, we have a challenger side. We have a king side. The challengers... Basically, play one point. If they win the point, they stay in. If they win both, then they're over to the king side. Um, but I just feed in a return. They have to hit a drop, and then we just play it out from there. Uh, and then what's cool is that if they win both points, after they win both points, uh, and they're coming around, you can even, like, call out three, two, one, and just, <laughs> yeah, keep it fun. Yep. Keep it, you know what I mean? Like, keep the energy high. But I've been using that, like, team game pro progression uh, or sorry, I've been using that team game with the last progression of the game portion. So, so for example, we'll do like a half court uh, drop game. We'll do a full court drop game, and then we'll piggyback it with like a, a team king of the court style style game. Uh, that way, you kind of have three different progressions. Yeah, I think it's a great break from the monotony of just you know talking and explaining. And I guess my tip, you know, to piggyback on that would just be you know one thing I've learned with with doing these camps is I can get into a mode where you know, I'm geeking out on strategy and talking and all that. But the reality is, is we, all of us only take in a certain percentage of information when everything's new being thrown at you. So understand that as a coach, it's important for you to always maintain that positive high energy. It's the one thing that you can always control. And, yeah, you know, we sure. all play this yeah. game for different reasons. So yeah. different people are going to lean more towards the fun social aspect than just a, I have to get from a three, five to a four or I have to get better. So if you can stay fun and energetic, keep it light at times, that'll help you uh, relate to 
everybody rather than just falling in love with with simply you know working on the drill and explaining everything so i think there's a a fine line where as a coach it's your job to bring and maintain that energy at all times yeah it's true so true and uh you know there's there's plenty of pros out there that think that just bringing their presence and showing up is good enough enough. yeah and i'm not gonna lie i would rather take energy and effort over somebody who is very qualified that 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 just thinks that they're overqualified and that just simply shows up. Yeah, like a monotone qualified. For, for That's sure. not yeah. going to do it for anybody, no, right? I mean, so you want to bring a certain yeah. amount. And, and I, I think I've said this before. I don't have the natural charisma. I'm not the natural extrovert that Tyson is. And I know I can fall in that category of being more of the, the professor or geeking out. So I make a conscious effort every time I teach a camp, every time I teach a lesson to bring that lighthearted self uh, or side yeah, of sure. me because I think it's, it's a little bit more relatable. So yeah. if it's not something that you are doing, know that it is possible. No, for sure. And I mean, if you've taken a camp from Kyle, uh, within 20 minutes, you will understand how much this guy loves pickleball. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, talks, talks with uh, so much enthusiasm, uh, loves the sport. You can totally tell he, he geeks out. He's a, he's a junkie for the sport. And I think, uh, I think, you know, customers that are, that are paying a select price point want to come and they want to know that, that the pro you know, is, is fully energized yeah. and they're like enthused and they love pickleball and they're, you know, loving everybody at the camp. I mean, that, that goes such a long way. So, uh, if, if you're in a boat where, uh, maybe you don't bring a lot of energy, fake it till you make it, baby. Heck yeah. Um, that stuff totally sells. And when, and the more you do fake it, right. The more it just becomes kind of your natural self. So, yeah. uh, again, I just think it's an important part. If that's something that's not natural for you, you can improve in that category too. For sure.